Good morning. Thanks all for coming. We'd like to uh, let you know that we're taping this. It's broadcast live on HCAM right now, so uh, if anybody has anything to say, we're going to have you come on up and speak into the microphone. My name is Stephen Dempsey. I'm the sewer supervisor for the Town of Hingham Sewer Department, and this is my colleague Susan Rowe. She's the health agent for the health department. We're here to talk about the fats, oils, and grease, or known as FOG pretreatment systems, and the Town of Hingham's FOG regulation. Uh, just want to remind everybody there's a sign in at the back of the room. We'd like to get you all signed in so we know you are here. We're going to be taking attendance. Our goal is to help everybody understand the issues we've had that are caused by fog getting into the town's municipal sewer system. We want to help you find ways of reducing the introduction of fog into the municipal sewer. And we want to explain how we're going to enforce the regulation moving forward. The Hingham Board of Health, in concurrence with the Hingham Sewer Commission, acting under the authority of Chapter 111, Section 31 of the Mass General Law has adopted the rules and regulations that make up the fog regulation. This regulation became effective on August 1st, 2010. Fog is the fat, oil, and grease by byproduct from food preparation, cooking, and cleaning. Fog comes from oils naturally present in most vegetables, fats contained in meats, dairy, and animal products, vegetable oil containing food products, vegetable oils and lard used in cooking and frying, and residual oils and fats cleaned from pots, pans, and dishes after cooking. In a, nutsa, in a nutshell, excuse me, the purpose of the fog regulation is to protect the residents, the businesses, and the environment within the town of Hingham from blockages of the town's sanitary sewer system caused by fats, oil, and grease discharged from the food establishments. In 2007, the Massachusetts Environmental Protect Protection Agency launched a fog control program for food establishments as part of their national pretreatment program. This program states that the biggest blockage to the municipal sewer comes from fog of animal and vegetable origin. Blockages happen when the wastewater cools and allows the fog to congeal. The state law permits cities and towns to pass stricter laws than the state law. If there's a difference between the state law and a local law, the stronger law prevails. Town agents will be conducting monthly compliance inspections and we will inspect the level of grease in respect to the depth of your grease traps to ensure the fog is within the 25% depth. We don't want to see more than a quarter of your trap full of grease, and that's why we're on this monthly regulation for the interior. The costs associated with mitigating grease once it's been introduced into the sanitary sewer system are staggering. From 2012 until present, nearly $37,000 has been spent by the Hingham Sewer Commission to remove fog from the system and maintain equipment affected by fog in the North Sewer District alone. More than 15,000 has been spent in the Weir River Sewer District. That's more than $50,000 of the ratepayers' money that could be better spent on things such as upgrading the town's infrastructure. Fog becomes evident right at the source. This service connection is one of yours. The photo was taken in mid-September. It's plain to see that the pipe coming from the restaurant is lined with heavy grease. Given enough time, this will cause a backup in the, in the restaurant and create a public health hazard and affect your business. In September, it was a Saturday afternoon, I had to go down and shut a restaurant down for four hours because grease blocked the connection and it backed up into the establishment. So I don't want to do that on a Saturday, so this is why we're having you guys here to go over the regulation. This can directly affect you guys, and, and you lose, you're going to lose business if we have to shut you down. <coughs> Once fog gets into the lines, it sticks to the inner pipe walls and begins to form blockages. 
paper and other debris stick to the buildup and it grows until the line becomes completely blocked. This blockage was cleared in mid-September before it caused a surcharge. You can see that pipe is half blocked. We found other, more than that. We found them completely blocked. This is an example of a sewer free, of a sewer line free of fog. That's what it should like, look like. Ideally, we want them all to look like that. That's what our goal is. Whatever fog gets through the lines begins to form in the sewer station wet wells. This heavy gre grease mat formed in one of the stations needed to be vacted out monthly in order to the station to function properly. This thing was growing six inches in a week. Here's another example of a grease mat forming in one of our stations. The equipment in the station doesn't fun function properly when the fog becomes too thick. Pumps become blocked and need to be pulled and cleared. Floats don't work properly, maintenance costs rise. You can see this pump is covered in grease, all the debris caught it, and there's uh, the impellers clogged. It's not working. Costly heavy equipment needs to be called in to remove the fog from the stations and the lines. You know, that was a $10,000 day alone, right there. Little humor here. Another problem is odor. Fog-laden lines and stations create an unpleasant odor to th that the public can be exposed <coughs> to. Costs associated with the odor control are substantial as well. Can I say something? The odor also from the grease blockage and when the pumping company had to come in to pump the establishment out was another reason that we had to close down the <laughs> restaurant. So that's something that we don't want to have to do. And if the monthly pumping is done, this will prevent a backup. Again, the purpose of the fog regulation is to protect the residents, the businesses, and the environment within the town of Hingham from blockages to the town's sanitary sewer system caused by fats, oils, and grease discharged from food establishments. I know it seems like it's an inconvenience and it's an expense, but this is for your benefit too. There are three types of fog pretreatment systems. Indoor automatic, an indoor passive, and an outdoor underground grease interceptor. The indoor automatic, which has a mechanical component and automatically, that automatically removes the grease into a small container. This container can be disposed of into your external grease container. So you'll clean that out bring it out, and then one of, one of the companies will come in and take it. An indoor passive trap that allows for the separation of grease on, top, on the top and the water to flow on the bottom, which will then via, exit via an outlet pipe. And you can see how that works. That grease all collects on one side of the baffle, and the water flows underneath and goes out. And the third is an exterior trap of 1,500 gallons below ground, similar to the passive grease trap. You'll see two 20-inch manhole covers to grade outside of your building. And there's a baffle inside, and the same, it allows that grease to cool and congeal in there, where it can be collected. According to the Uniform State Plumbing Code, all pot sinks, floor drains, floor sinks, automatic dishwashers, pre-rinse sinks, soup kettles, workstations and automatic hood wash units must be protected by a grease trap. During your monthly inspections, the town's going to be looking at all these fixtures. We're going to ensure that they're hooked up into your grease trap. Many times we're taking in the plumbing inspector to see what you guys are hooked up to, so it's not just Steve and I that you'll see. You might see Brian McPherson with us to look and see if all the equipment is hooked up properly. The next couple of slides will review the fog requirements for your establishments. All food establishments must install a fog pretreatment system if they generate any kind of fog by byproduct. The sewer or Board of Health may require 
an installation or upgrade if grease is found in the municipal sewer. Most importantly, all indoor traps must be inspected, serviced, and pumped monthly by a permitted hauler. A list of the permitted haulers can be found on the Board of Health website. There's also going to be a maintenance log that you'll see in a couple minutes that needs to be hung near the trap. Keep all your pumping that you guys are having done, all your receipts. I would keep it in a booklet. If at any time throughout the year we need to look at your log and see how much was pumped, then you'll have it accessible. Exterior traps need to be pumped quarterly. So the interior is monthly and the exterior is quarterly. You can hang that exterior pumping log in a place where either the Board of Health, the sewer department, or even the plumbing inspector can look at the log to see how frequently you guys are getting your traps pumped. All grease traps must be serviced and cleaned by a professional drain cleaner a licensed plumber or one of our permitted haulers. A list of the permitted haulers can be found on the Board of Health website in the fats, oils, and grease section. Also, we have one in the back, don't we? Yeah, there's handouts too in the back that you guys can grab one of the permitted haulers. Um, for the haulers who are here, it is a $100 fee with the Board of Health. There's an application on the Board of Health website and we'll also need to see your registration for the truck and the, I'll do an inspection once you pay all your fees. Occasionally, when you guys, the haulers are pumping a restaurant, we're gonna see how you're doing and see if you're getting all the grease, if you're cleaning the trap and what service you're providing to the establishment. So it's another way that we can be sure that the establishments are paying for what they're getting. A couple times we've seen that guys are just pumping it and they're leaving a lot of grease left and still charging the establishment. So that's something that we're looking at. On July 17, 2013, the Board of Health voted that all new food establishments must have an external trap. That all internal traps be cleaned monthly and the external traps be cleaned quarterly. Most importantly, a year's worth of documented maintenance data will need to be submitted to the Board of Health and Sewer Department for approval. Please contact our office and we can talk about what data you need to submit in order to get a variance. Orders have already been issued to several food establishments by the Board of Health who are not in compliance of this pumping loss of your food establishment permit could be at the stake for non-compliance. Here's a copy of the um, inspection form. There's some in the back. You can get it on the Board of Health website. But this should be filled out completely by your <coughs> hauler, your pumper. We need to have gallons pumped. The size of the trap in gallons, and the haulers know this information. Their signature, and then if the sewer department or board of health comes in and any comments for the haulers if you want to make a comment on the trap looks good it might need to be replaced anything that you could add to help comply with this fog regulation so to review the sewer department or health officer can order the installation or upgrade of a pretreatment system if there's a blockage in the sewer system and your food establishment was determined to have caused the blockage. It could be the Board of Health, it could be the sewer department, and I would also add it could be the plumbing inspector. Uh, data was compiled of the sewer lines to the town to create a baseline in September. We've cameraed a lot of the sewer lines, not all of them, but most of them. Uh, so we know where we're going moving forward. Uh, what they looked like in September and what they're going to look like as we go through or what they should look like Going forward the sewer lines outside of your establishment will be routinely inspected for grease. So if we're kind of We're kind of going by and if we look up and we go into one of the establishments and it looks like a lot of grease is coming out of there We're going to be knocking on the door 
Violation and fines have already been issued to those establishments not in compliance. In addition to these fines, the Board of Health can suspend or revoke your food establishment permit. And here's a list of the permitted haulers that the food establishment can choose from. These trucks have all been inspected and then we'll also go out and be sure that these haulers are doing the service that they are promised to provide. Here's a handout. There's some in the back. Um, they're also on the Board of Health website that you guys can post. It's for your employees just so they understand the importance of not dumping grease down the sink, not dumping it in the catch basins, which we had, just keeping it in the area that has the grease trap. So moving forward, there will be no variances for one year. If you think you currently have a variance, I just want to ensure you that you do not. We're going to be looking for the monthly pumping on the interiors and the quarterly pumping on the exteriors, no exceptions. The town will conduct frequent inspections, which may include pl the plumbing inspector. There'll be televised monitoring of the sewer system to ensure the fog's not entering the sewer line, the sewer system from your food establishment, and corrective actions will be enforced when they're deemed necessary. So if you want any more information, here's our contact information you can get us uh, 730 to 4 o'clock or 830 to 430 430 the town hall and I'd like to open it up now if anyone has any questions uh, we're gonna have a brief question and answer section and if you want to ask your question come on up to the microphone anybody so we're all clear Sir? Hi, how are you? Hi there. Hi, Susan. Hi. Yeah, my name is Dave Kilbost. I'm with the Patriot Cinemas, one of the two theaters here in town. And, uh, you know, I know you say no acceptance, but I have a couple of unique circumstances here. And as much as Loring Hall, for example, while I serve food there, there's no food preparation whatsoever in that building. It's prepared elsewhere and simply served mm -hmm. at the theater. Uh, the other theater also, while it does serve food, the only food preparation there is popcorn. And happily, I send all the oil home with my customers. So it's, uh, you know, while I do have a grease trap at the shipyard cinema, you know, the monthly pumping is, well, the last one that I just had, for instance, the um, all owners pumping company, mm -hmm. you know, the note was pump five gallons, mostly water. So, you know, well, although I do appreciate what you're saying, this is not really the forum where we're going to get into specific establishments. That's if you have uh, something on the regulations, a question on that, no. that's more what we're here for today. If you have specific concerns about your establishment, <coughs> you can contact us mm -hmm. on there and we will talk to you at a later date. Okay, great. Okay. Appreciate it. We'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you. <coughs> If anybody else has any questions regarding their establishment in particular and they feel that they are not a big generator of fog, we can go through what we're going to require and what information and if there could be a discussion. But feel free to email Steve or I. Any other questions? Randy? Steve, did you mention um, that if they had a year's worth of data, we could look at it? Uh, Yes, we, we will look at it, but uh, we, we want to ensure that all the data that we're requiring is on the new form. So generally speaking, you can come in and show us your last year's worth of data, but if it doesn't have everything that we're requiring on these new forms, chances are you're not going to get the variance. That's why I want you to keep all your pumping records, put it in a spot so we can go through and see what data you have compiled. You know, the other, the other option you can do is feel free to contact us when you're going to get pumped out. We'll come in and take a look and we'll see what's going on and 
see how much you're getting pulled out of there and have a first-hand look at it. That might help you guys out as well. Anything else? Okay, well, thanks for coming. Thank and, you. Uh, Appreciate your time.